Hello and welcome to the third and the last part of this series of introduction to electromagnetic compatibility for designers. In this part of the presentation, I would like to talk about mixed signal circuits because they are of a very high importance in practice and most of the times when we are making practical designs, we are dealing with analog signals, low level analog signals, also high speed high frequency digital signals together then most of the times they're even on the same PCB so this is very important to know how we should work it, uh, design these PCBs from the EMC point of view so as we said some si systems are mixed signal circuits and uh, they contain both analog and digital circuits and the mixed signal circuits have microcontrollers, FPGAs or microprocessors or digital signal processing devices and also analog to digital converters or digital to analog converters, voltage references, filters and operational amplifiers. So it means digital circuitry, clocked digital circuitry and also uh, analog circuits. and. The problems with mixed signal circuits is usually that either digital logic circuits interfere with sensitive low-level analog circuits like often audio or radio frequency and also high power motor or relay driver noisy analog circuits which interfere with both the digital and analog circuits. And we see also here some examples of mixed signal circuits, a ECG or electrical electrocardiograph also temperature controller and also a sound card from the PC. There are very good examples of mixed signal circuits. So always keep in mind two principles uh, of basic principles of EMC. First, the current should return to the source as compactly and locally as possible, forming the smallest loop area, hmm? because otherwise it will create a loop antenna. And also, system should only have one reference plane. If the system has two reference planes, it creates a dipole antenna. The key to determining the optimum mix signal board is understanding where and how the current return flows or return current circuit flows. Most designers only think about where the signal current flows and ignore the return path. So, the first mixed signal issue is that the digital return currents interfere with analog signals, as we said. And we want to make sure that the original ground current do not flow in the analog section of the board. So we have one section with analog circuits, one section with digital circuits. So we said one problem is when these return currents cross the analog part. So We often hear of splitting the grounds, so split the the ground to digital and analog ground. So do you think is it really required to split the planes? This this what you see in the picture is called split plane. So you have two split planes. If the digital signals are routed properly, the digital return currents have no desire to flow through the analog section of the ground plane and corrupt the analog signals, mostly disturbing the ground potential. So it is not necessary, it's, it's important to note, it is not necessary to split the analog and digital ground planes. Therefore, it's wise to use one solid ground plane and partitioning the PCB into analog and digital section. So you do not need to do that, although you can, but there are some techniques and some important things that you need to have in mind, but this is not necessary. And the digital signal must be routed only in digital section of the board. So if you see in the picture, you have sec two sections of the board, the digital section and you have a digital trace. And you, you want the return currents to be just in the digital section. So you do not route like this in the analog section. Then the return currents will go from there. So now I give you these layout examples for mixed signal grounds. We already said that grounding is quite important when we are creating 
mixed signals uh, when you're cre designing a system grounding is the first important thing and also for the mixed signal circuit so here if you have an A to D chip or or if you have a microcontroller that has ADC pins so this is the method that you can use in order to partition your analog and digital grounds so here are all the digital circuits and the digital traces and this is where your for example communication or digital uh, pins of your ADC connect and on the other side you have the analog ADC inputs you see here that the ground plane is not completely isolated but it's split uh, uh, it's actually kind of a isol this is called isolated ground plane sorry and you see that the ground plane of the analog and digital are connected below the analog to digital converter so and if you have more than one ADC you can use this partitioning that I already said if you don't have very high resolution ADCs like more than 16 bits then this is a good approach you have multiple analog inputs and you can use this approach so you should never as I already mentioned just try to to uh, route your traces across uh, split ground planes because as you see it creates a, a very big loop and if you have multiple board systems where you have a digital board and analog board it's always best to put the ADC and DACs of your analog board on just one board and all the analog circuits and the digital board and so you see the ADC should be on the analog board not on the digital part so this method is good enough for up to as I said 16-bit converters but not always but most of the times for higher resolutions above 18 bits mm -hmm. more ground current isolation might be required in high resolution measurements even 0.1 percent or even 0.01 percent of total digital return current may cause a problem if it flows through the analog ground plane so you see here for number of bits the resolution for the 2 volt reference when you go to 24 volts the resolution or the smallest step of change is 60 nanovolts compared to 8 or 10 bits so very very small uh, ground voltage developed or ground noise because of the return current can cause a problem so in such such cases what we do is in order to avoid the picture on the right side we can use this approach if we have enough space we can use isolated ground plane for multiple ICs so we create kind of uh, ground semi islands that are just connected below the ADC so there's no way here now that the return currents can flow through the analog section so this is the first method the other method that you can use is called uh, vertical isolation I don't think I have a picture of it here in this presentation but it means that you put your analog circuits with one reference on top for example with the analog reference on the bottom so you just connect your analog grounds to that second layer ground reference and you put your digital circuits on the ground level or on the uh, sorry the bottom of the PCB and also then another reference ground if, if you have a four layer PCB for example and you connect the digital grounds to that plane and you connect the analog and digital planes just where the power enters your board so this is where they are connected so the return currents do not interfere so you see here this is a very good representation of how this current is distributed when you have high resolution so this very small currents even very low percentage of the current can go into the analog section so it's also recommended to minimize loading effect by using buffer registers and quiet digital bus so the quiet digital bus is when you have a digital interface of any type it's a bus either a serial bus or a parallel bus and you put some resistors the value is between 100 and 500 ohms and this will reduce loading especially for high resolution ADCs and also 
when you minimize loading it means that you reduce the transient currents in power rails which is also a good thing so for power supply how create power supply for the analog section of your board so you make the analog supply using the following methods first we separate the power supply or a voltage regulator after the digital power supply or you use filter after the voltage regulator so you see this in picture if this is your power connector and it brings power in and this is your digital power and digital circuits here you either have a dedicated regulator for your analog circuits or you use filtering in some cases and remember that in such a case linear regulators are preferred because especially for high resolution converters because they inherently are low noise they suppress noise very much especially when you have some ferrite beads with them in series so when you're using a filter this can be either a global filter like here it's a global filter for all the sources or if you have like high currents very high speed ADCs then you can use uh, also local um, in for individual IC filtering so individual filters for the power supply and also global filter so that you form a higher level filter and also you do it for both, both the analog and the digital ground here also shows a mixed signal IC and how the decoupling capacitor is connected. You see that the digital power pin comes from here and the analog ground pin is uh, ground via actually is here to, to analog ground plane. So this is what is recommended to do. But I think also personally that this will also work if you this is creating a very short path and that this is the idea because you want to create the shortest path for the pin and for the cap yeah, but if you can put the cap close enough for example you put it exactly on the uh, bottom layer and below this pin then you can also use two vias out like this uh, like I mean here in between this you can also put this here so now we have the second problem that we have high power inductive loads of low frequency nature like motors relays that interferes with both analog and digital circuits and we all we usually have this problem in IPC equipment or industrial process control equipment uh, you, you you can use the following method in order to solve this problem use a return trace and not playing for noise noise anal noisy analog signal so you don't share a common ground so if you have relays or motors for them you create traces so segment the ground plane with a bridge which you will see route the noisy analog signal in a way that the return current of, a, of least resistance does not pass through the digital and analog sections of the board mm -hmm. so this is also you consider the because in low frequency we have the path of least resistance and you see okay this process crosses this path and it doesn't cross my main circuits. Split the ground plane and use opto isolators or transformers for signals that need to pass over the split planes. So this is also one approach. And let's see them. So this is the bridge. Then you have your digital circuits or analog circuits. And then you have a high power motor driver or relays. And the point is that usually in such cases you you enter the power from these uh, from this side because you don't want the power to go all the way through this bridge but this bridge here is just to send the control signals and our communication signals so if you have for example here some MOSFETs switching high very high power loads then this mode will avoid the return current to go back through here mm -hmm. so this is this is the idea that the return currents will not go through here because they try to take the least the path of the least resistance and so so they go like out from there and you can also use an example for a digital for a I don't know digital ground plane in a plug-in card like IO modules of PLCs for example you can use this cables to the motors or 
sensors and things like this or relays and here you have the opto couplers that isolate the primary and the secondary so there is one very important thing here and it's if you are routing a digital trace it should not cross this split plane and also you should make this split plane the same potential as your ground plane so if you are using let's say 24 volts and then you step it down to 5 or 3.3 volts for your digital circuits then on this side also you should either connect your 12, 24 volts and the same ground or if they don't have the same ground then you should connect you should put one at least one capacitor from the primary to secondary so that uh, the so that this so that they become at the same potential at high frequency otherwise it is probable that your secondary or your primary plane has a different voltage and then it will radiate with respect to the other and that's why we, we don't want this to happen so if you have just one power supply then you connect the ground separately here one ground for here with one wire and one wire from here or if you don't have this and for example this is like a power supply an isolated power supply then you should put some capacitors that will connect the primary and the secondary ground okay let's get to the stack up and pcb layout so as i already mentioned the stack up plays a very very big role in success or failure of a pcb design and that's what we're going to look at here stack up means ordering of layers and layer spacing and as i said P pcb stack up plays a key role in the overall performance of a system a good stack up will boost the PCB performance, especially in radiation problems. So the following factors are important with respect to board stack up. The number and type of layers, the ordering or sequence of layers, and the spacing between the layers. And determining the number of layers depends on the number of signals and the cost of the PCB, clock frequency, emission requirements, shielded or unshielded PCB and also EMC knowledge and expertise but as a general rule that's why they always say it's better to use multi-layer PCBs a four-layer PCB will be much better than a two-layer PCB when you have ground and power planes so when you're designing single and double sided boards single and double sided PCBs are chosen for cost and not EMC concentration for frequencies below 10 megahertz we use them normally for higher it's not recommended if you're using high frequency circuits directly implemented on your PCB you might have high frequency modules that you just connect them to a Twitter PCB then that's fine but if you're like want to implement a very high frequency circuit on that it's not a really good idea use ground and power grids and not plane for such boards you cannot do this as I already explained because you will need the top and button to route your circuit so it's not possible that you create planes so you create power and ground grids as we explained before first route the critical signals and make them as short as possible with the adjacent return trace clock and buses should have a ground return trace on both sides of them so when you have clocks and buses if you're not using ground fill, if you're not filling your empty space of your PCB with, or even if you're filling this, you should be careful to put ground return traces on both sides of your traces. So when you're filling it with ground, then you should route this afterward or change it afterward in a way that on the both sides it's covered with ground. Place a small ground plane under under the crystals or oscillator sorry this is a repetition decouple the vcc of all clocked ic's with the lc network so if you have a lc network sorry if you have a, a clocked ic try uh, try to use and also especially these uh, oscillators use an lc network l here is the ferrite bit fill the unused 
support area with ground but make sure they are connected to your ground at multiple points this is also another important thing if you're using ground feel if you feel the empty space of your two layer board with after you create your ground grid put a lot of vias in it so that it creates the lowest amount of impedance if you're having ICs which is normally the case use a minimum of two decoupling capacitors per IC and place them in opposite side of the IC use at least four capacitors on flat flat packages I think I explained this on the power supply distribution so use an image plane on single or double sided boards image plane is where your you have a plane or a ground plane and not actually a ground plane it's just a metal plane which is below your PCB and it's not even doesn't also need to be connected to the ground this will reduce the radiant emission greatly and make it all either from a large conductive aluminum or or copper foils so here you see example of a single layer and a double layer stack up so you have in a single layer stack up substrate or you have the core and you have the copper and the solder mask also for the double layer PCBs you have top top layer button layer and the solder mask the primary reason for using single layer and double layer PCBs is cost so when you're thinking of high performance improved EMC consider at least four layer PCB this is in most cases as I said much much better now if you thinking think of multi-layer stack ups multi-layer stack ups or boards provide significant reduction in radiated emission over two layer designs with the same parameters a four layer board will reduce 20 dB or less emission will create actually will, cre will create 20 dB or less emission than a two layer board. Boards with planes are much better than those without them because, as we explained, planes allow macro strips in a strip line configuration, which help us to have controlled impedance at transmission lines that causes significantly less radiation. And significantly less radiation is because your loop areas are reduced your return currents are short and also because of the controlled impedance you have no reflections the loop area is reduced significant reduction of ground noise due to minimize ground impedance as we saw ground has an impedance so when you have uh, minimize your ground then ground noise then the ground impedance will all uh, the ground impedance then the ground noise will also significantly reduce so here are four different uh, four layer stack ups so the first one is the standard stack up that you have around 40 uh, 40 mils it's 0 0.4 uh, 0 040 inch or 40 mil so you have 40 mil and then 10 mil between the planes and the signal signal layers and you have one ground plane and one power plane so this is the standard four layer this is much better than a two layer PCB but it will be better if you can have a ground plane on the first layer and the last layer and then route the power and signal layers in the two remaining layers uh, if you use this then your inner layers are shielded but the problem is that then it's difficult for probing it's difficult for tracing your signals and also because you have so many components normally on top and on bottom <clears throat> then then this ground will not be really perfect there will be a lot of cuts in it and this is what we don't want especially if you're using vertical isolation as I said you have components on both top and bottom so one other method is using the ground and power plane and I would really not recommend this so but the best stack up that you can use for a four layer PCB is that you you have two ground planes and 
Then on the top and bottom, you route your power and also signal traces or signal yeah, planes or polygons or whatever. And it's because when you have two ground planes, you have two references for, for the circuits. And also you will have, if you connect these two grounds, if you can, of course, then you will have much less impedance. Even if you don't connect them, this will, uh, you have different ground for different circuits. So it's, it's, it's much better to have two ground planes and then, then a ground plane and a power plane because we already explained that this is not necessary that you have power planes. This is good, but this is not necessary. So we can here also see, I don't give examples of all stack up types because it's a very lengthy discussion, but I just give here about normal PCBs and also if here six layer stack up, you see in the six layer, this is the normal six layer stack up where you have low frequency signals on top, then you have a ground plane, and then you have two high frequency signals in the form of uh, strip line, and then power plane and low frequency signals. Another one that you can also see or use is, this is the normal one, it works fine. The, the good thing about this stack up is that you have four layers to root, you have much more space, and you have always one reference plane for any trace or layers, any signal layer next to it. But the distances is almost equal. But in the second one, you have a ground plane in the second layer, then you have in the middle Oh, sorry, it's, there's a problem here. I see here that we have six and eight layer stack ups. So let's, let's get here. So this is a, another uh, version that you can have, and it's maybe better that you make the signals and much closer to the plane and creating a big distance here at the core. So you have power plane signals and signals on both sides, ground plane, power plane. Even though I would recommend in such a case, you have a ground plane, ground plane, and use the signal for also power. Here also you see uh, eight layer stack up. So in eight, eight layer stack up is like this as you see, you have multiple ground planes. This is a very good, good one. You have three ground planes. In this one you have two ground planes and also two power planes. Which I would say the second one is most of the case is not really necessary that you have multiple ground uh, power planes. If, if it's possible, you can really route these power planes. It depends, but most of the times you can route them in the signal planes. But the thing is that here you see it's kind of, the stack up is always kind of symmetrical. So if you have low frequency signal on here, also low frequency signal at the end. If you have then a power plane, you have also at the end a power plane. If you have a ground plane, you have a ground plane. And so on and so forth. And also you have the high frequency signals here in form of yeah, asymmetrical again strip line. So partitioning. There's a famous saying for that all PCB designers know and it's that 90% of design is placement and 10% is routing. So this is very important to partition your circuits properly so that the routing is just easy. So you should partition your PCB in logical blocks. So you have high speed and logic and clock and clock drivers and memory. Then you have low speed logic for example, you have video, you have audio and low frequency signals, you have input output drivers, and then I.O. connectors and filters, common mode filters. It's always good to avoid your high speed logic and memory close to I.O. area. Place crystal and oscillators as close to the ICs as possible. Also, if they have these oscillators, as I said, use a filter at their input. Proper PCB partitioning will minimize trans length and as a result reduces the word emission because then you have smaller loops. So here's an example of the concept of PCB partitioning. You have here your digital circuits, your motor driver, your power supply, and you have the input power and the I.O. cables.
and the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and cellular are on the other side of your board. So you have partitioned your PCB into RF, digital, and power, I would say. It's just motor control and power. Yeah, motor control and power supply and also the I.O. And now you already see that the I.O.s on the cables are just on one side of the PCB. And this is in order to reduce the common mode radiation. So 90% of the PCB problems are the result of just 10% of the circuit. So for emission, high frequency, fast rise time, uh, fast rise time digital circuits with repetitive, uh, repetitive signals such as clocks, buses, and some control signals are the, are the greatest problems. Clocks are usually the worst case. Get paranoid about them. So, so here in this picture, you see in a two, 3D and 2D view that if we have uh, that here we have a crystal oscillator and you see that I tried to make the trace which goes to the input pins of the IC as short as possible and also I covered around the oscillator with kind of a ground island keep the crowd uh, clock trace as short as possible for best placement routing, place and route the clocks first. So think of when you're doing placement first, think of the clock and other critical signals. Place a ground plane on the component layer under the crystal of the oscillator and connect it to the main ground plane in several points. This is what I've done here. I've put it in, I've connected this at six points to the ground. Even though it would have been better if, see here for example, you see a top layer, this is four connections, but it's just one. So I should maybe extend this, should have extend this layer a bit or more so that it's fully connected. Okay, that's almost everything. And thanks for your time and consideration. I hope this has been useful. Of course, this is not enough. You have to also study from your side but I think at least you have now an idea what you should do and uh, what actually is EMC and what aspects of the EMC you should keep in mind. So now I will show you a example PCB which I designed which can show you different aspects of the things that I said. So let's get into that.